In this video, I'll show you how to blur part of your video in Camtasia two different ways. The easy traditional way and a better way that also happens to be easy. I'll show you how to animate your blurs as well. Let's get into it. I've got a sample project open and I've got a screen recording already in the timeline. Just a simple screen recording is not very long and I want to demonstrate how to blur out part of the recording. You may want to blur out part of your screen if there's sensitive information like maybe an email address or something that you don't want people to see in the video once you've produced it. So that would be the reason to use blur. Let me show you how to add it. The way I used to do it would be to go to annotations up here and then click on this blur icon here, blur and highlight. Now I'm using Camtasia on a Mac. On Windows, this looks a little bit different. Uh, the blur effect is actually an icon that looks just like this teardrop in PC. On a Mac, the blur effect is this one right here. There's a couple other options, uh, but this is the one we want. This is the blur effect. Click that and drag it down to the timeline. Now this classic way of doing it, the blur goes onto its own track. Okay, and then in the canvas, it shows up here like this and we can click and move that to wherever we want to blur something. Let's, in this case, let's blur the address or the, the web URL that I have down in the corner here. Simply place it there and then grab a corner and resize it. Okay, we can zoom in. I'm using the mouse wheel to zoom in. Zoom in just to make sure we've got it in the right place. That looks good right there. So now with the blur effect selected, we can go up here to the properties window and there's a couple things we can change. We have to click on blur up here and then you can change the intensity. Okay, like this. Or you can click on invert and what that does is it blurs out everything but what you've highlighted. Okay, but that's not what we're doing here. So let's leave that like that. So you can change the intensity like this. Okay, that's pretty much all you can do with this classic way. So. Let's now zoom this out to fit the screen. Now, where you run into trouble is if you want to zoom in to part of the screen. So normally what I do when I, when I add a zoom and pan on a, on a screen, let's say I want to draw attention to this bottom corner of the screen, what I would normally do is go up to animations and then click on custom animation and I bring that down to the screen and then I would make adjustments to my screen. So let's say I want to zoom in. So we'll change the scale and then let's reposition it. Let's say I wanted to zoom in right here. Okay. So now if I play that back, you'll see that the zoom happened to the screen, but not the blur. Okay. So there's a way around that and it's, it's a little bit cumbersome, but, but basically what you do is you would grab another animation and you'd have to drag that down onto the blur effect. Make sure it lines up in the same place, okay? The same start and ending positions. Put the playhead here at the beginning. Everything lines up perfectly well now. I'm just zooming in so we can have a look at this better. Everything lines up now, and then when the animation happens, notice how the blur effect does not follow suit. So all we have to do is basically put the playhead after the at the ending position of the animation, and then reposition the blur. Okay, now let's put it back to the part that we want to blur. That looks good just like that. Okay, so now when we play this animation, it works, okay? Now, now one other thing you have to keep in mind is the easing. Now, I did not have easing set for this animation of the screen. So if I did, let's just right click the animation and under animation easing, let's change that to exponential in and out. That adds easing in and out. I think that looks better. If we do that to this animation, but not this one, you're gonna get, it's not gonna work right. See that? See how it kind of, it didn't follow suit because this animation is set to linear. So if I right click that and change that animation also to exponential in and out, then we should be fine. Just like that. So that's how I used to animate my blurs on my screens. I'd have to make sure that I'm animating the blurs as well as the screens and that they're animating in the exact same spot and at the exact same type of animation as far as easing goes. Okay, but there's a much easier way to do that and let me just show you that now. Let's zoom this back out to fit. I'm gonna delete this blur animation and I'm gonna delete this animation here. 
Okay, so now we're back to where we started. So the better way to handle this is to go up to Visual Effects and you wanna grab this Blur Region. Okay, click on that and drag that down. And this time it's not gonna go on its own track, it's gonna be an effect that goes on the clip itself. Okay, and you can see that, so you can't see it here taking up a new track, but if you expand this arrow, you can see that the Blur Region was added right there. Okay, we can highlight it and we can see the properties over here. There's a lot more properties to this as well. So let's first focus on this here in, on the canvas. We can click this and drag it the same way we did before. Let's zoom in here. Let's, uh, let's blur that web address again, just like that. So now I wanna bring your attention to the properties of this blur region. So now, as you can see here, the blur is set to 150, but there's a lot more room to blur a lot more than the other way, okay? You can change the intensity a lot, okay? So there's that. Also, you can change the tint. If you notice here, this is a little bit, it's, it's white, okay? There's, there's a white to the blur. If we brought the opacity of this white tint, and you can tell it's white by this color right here, you can bring the opacity of that down, and then there is no tint to it at all. It's just the same as the other way, okay? But with this blur region, you can add a tint of whatever color you want. So if I wanted to add, say, a blue tint, the blue that, to match this background here, I could go in here and change the color. Let's use the color picker and pick this blue here. All right, now I can change the opacity of the tint. If I bring that all the way up at 100%, it's totally hiding what was underneath this blur region, okay? That's not the effect we want to go with. So we'll bring that down. In fact, I'm going to bring the opacity down to 0%. So we're just dealing with the blur. In addition, you can change the corner, the corners in like this, the corner rounding. Okay, that would have more of an effect if, uh, if you had some opacity of the tint. Let's change this back to white, just so I can demonstrate. If there's a white tint like this, and you modify the corner rounding, right, you get that effect. We'll zoom in a little bit more so you can see this. And then the feathering, if you click on this and drag it to the left, you can feather it on the inside, or if you drag it to the right, you can feather it to the outside. Just a couple more effects that you can do. Something else I wanna show you, and this is, this is super cool, and that is, now that you don't have the blur effect on its own track, uh, you've got it applied to the entire clip. Well, maybe you don't want to apply it to the whole clip. Maybe you just want it to start, say, right about here. Well, the way you do that with the blue blur region is you come down here with this arrow expanded like this, okay? Click and drag the edge of the blur re region like this and have it start there. Okay, now the blur doesn't take effect until right there. You can do the same thing at the other end. Click and drag that. Let's say we only wanna blur it for that amount of, t amount of time. Okay, that's super cool. In addition, you may have noticed that that kind of, it kind of fades in. That's because we have easing set. If you look up here in the properties, you can see that it has an ease in setting and an ease out setting. Both are currently at one second. Okay, I can change that to two seconds and two seconds, and then the fade in will happen much slower. And the fade out as well. Now, one more thing I wanna show you. Let's just uh, reset this a little bit. I'm gonna change this so that it happens to the entire clip again. So now this is where it gets super cool. Let's zoom back out so we can see the entire screen. We still have our blur region on this region here, which is what we want. If we wanna animate down to that corner, let's go ahead and grab an animation, custom animation, drag it down to our blur region, and now we can make the adjustments we wanna make. Let's just zoom out, I'm gonna change the with this selected, I'm gonna change the scale and I'm gonna change the position like this, okay? I'm gonna make sure the easing is set to what I want it, which is exponential in and out. And now we have our animation that includes the animating of the blur region as well. So the blur region basically puts the blur on the clip and attaches it to it instead of it being a separate item on its own track. And you're not limited to just zooming in and out, zooming and panning like this. Let's say now we want to drag another animation down like this. 
Now let's say we want to move over here and, oh, I don't know, maybe we even want to uh, rotate this. If we go to rotation, we can change this. If we rotate that like that, okay, you notice how the blur region rotates with it as well. Okay, not necessarily very practical in this case, but that demonstrates what you can do with Blur Region. If you want more tips like this, come join me on Tuesdays for my weekly live stream. I live stream every Tuesday here on YouTube, sharing my screen and doing how-to tutorials. I show you how I make my videos and I answer any questions you have live. So if you're looking to level up your videos, join me on Tuesdays. I'm Rob and I'll see you in the next video or in a live stream. I'll see you soon.